Now, thinking about the scientific method, we have a scientist down here, Andrew Woodham. Uh, I understand that you work with Padilla Bay National Estuarine Research Reserve, and you probably have some experience with the scientific method. So the first step of the scientific method we just learned is observation. Can you tell us a little bit about some of your observations? Sure, Alex. The thing we're going to try to do today, if the fog lets up, is we're going to do this thing called data flow. Now, what we do with data flow is we drive around the bay really fast, and we have a sensor over here that gets water pumped up through it, and it meshes with another piece of equipment, and on the computer, it logs it all together. Now, this piece of equipment, the sensor, it's a pretty fancy piece of equipment right here, and it has several different parameters that we can measure. Let me uh, you a, used a big word there, a parameter. You said there's several different parameters. What do you mean by that? Well, it just has different types of sensors. And each sensor, we have a temperature. And if you look right here, this one right here is the temperature sensor. And so when we're driving around the bay, the water gets pushed up into this little area and it records temperature. This right here is another parameter. It's called turbidity. It, it records turbidity. And what turbidity is, is it, it's kind of a measure of how cloudy the water is. It's important to know how much, how clear the water is because if it's too cloudy, things like eelgrass, which is down all along here, will not grow as well. There's also a sensor right here. This one's called a dissolved oxygen sensor. So it tells us how much oxygen is actually in the bay. And many living things require oxygen to survive. So we, we go around and we drive throughout the bay and we, we record these different things. And what we do is once we get the data, we mesh it with this called this GPS right here, which stands for Global Positioning System. What does the GPS unit do? So what it does is it communicates with satellites and the satellites send us a position that we are out in the bay and I wrote a computer program that will take our position out in the bay and it puts the data that we record just at that moment and it puts them together so later on we can come in and we can map it and we can observe just what is going on in the bay as far as the temperature and the dissolved oxygen and the turbidity. Uh, Andrew, you also have these tubes and things over here. Can you explain yeah, this part yeah. of your equipment? So, the tubes over here, in the back of the boat, way back here, we have a tube that goes down. I got a lot of this stuff from just a normal hardware store. That's an important thing, is that a lot of times, fancy research, you gotta get stuff from hardware stores and just go around. So, what I do is, at the back of the boat, there's a little thing that's like this. It's a housing and the water gets pushed in as we go. So as it gets pushed in, it moves up this tubing and goes through. We have a little water pump here to make it flow faster. And the water pump pushes the water all the way along, comes in. We're going about 20 miles an hour when we're doing this. It comes in and this sensor fits inside of here and we screw it in and it makes a watertight seal. And that's how the water passes through all of these sensors. And then we have just this tube just sitting outside the boat and it just shoots the water out so we don't flood the boat. So then uh, you said you built this equipment with mm -hmm. uh, stuff from the hardware store. Yeah. You said that you wrote the computer program. That's right. And from this uh, sampling that you do, you've actually created a map. Yeah. Heather, bring this map over here and we'll, we'll take a look. Okay. Andrew, if you can uh, just explain a little bit about what we see here. All right. What this is, is this is Padilla Bay out here behind all the fog. We have a big bay and we're located just at the very bottom corner of this map right that here. That would be the, the bottom, bottom right, right corner. hand corner. Yeah. So on this map, we have a picture of Padilla Bay and you can see the coastline just going along the right side of the map. It's where you can see squares and different things as farming plots. 
And then just to the left of that, you have the bay. And you can see little channels running all throughout the bay. And that will be covered with water when we do the data flow. And just through the middle of the, the map, you can see this line going from the bottom to the top. That's from south to north. And you see different colors. You see yellow and orange and some red, a little bit of blue, but there's a lot of yellow and oranges. And that stands for warmer temperatures in this map. The red means it's the hottest temperature in the bay. And then, so the blue, blue stands for cooler temperatures. And as you move to the far left of the map, you can see we have some really strong blue lines and they go around some islands out here that you can see. And then the water out on the left side of the map is very deep. And with that deep water, we see different things. Andrew, can you just uh, point again to where we are now and then point to Hat Island? Sure. Well, actually, I'll point to where we okay. are so, over yes. in the lower right-hand on... corner. And you point to Hat Island. All right, so Hat Island is on the left side of the map about in the kind of bottom left part of the map. Circled in blue. Yeah, circled in blue. And can you tell us how far it is? That is about three miles from where we are now. So well, it's a pretty big bay out there. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. And Heather, while you're here, let's uh, go on to the next part because after we get our observations, thank you very much, yeah. Andrew, then we go to the next step of the scientific method, which is the question. We're going to get some questions about this map. Actually, I think what we'll do is we'll uh, start with the oyster. Oyster, what question do you have about the map? Where's my house? <laughs> Where's my house? That's a very good question. And uh, Pat, what question do you have about this map? Why is it so warm up in the red area? Oh, you can see that up, in, uh, up on this side of the map, up near the top, you see a bright red area which indicates it's warm. Your question is why is it so warm there? Mm -hmm. Stephen? Take a look at the map here and give us a question about the map. Why, is, why aren't the lines so constant? Why are there little gaps in between? Yes, you can see as the line goes up through the middle of the bay, there are some places where there's no line. There's a gap. I'll bet the boat didn't jump out of the water there. And uh, Noah, could you please ask us a question about the map? Why is the water so cold here? Aha, he's pointing out to the left-hand side of the map, what makes the water so cold? Cody, do you have a question for us about this map? Where's the shore? Where is the shore? Well, I can tell you that's way over here on the far right-hand side of the map where those farms are. All the place where the boat was driving, of course, that was underwater. 